Good afternoon. It's Tuesday, March 1st, 2016. Super Tuesday, a day when 14 states hold presidential primaries and millions of people are voting right now on their choice for their party's nominee for president. And we've got coverage for, of it all for you this afternoon. Our reporter Lana Harris is in downtown Athens talking to voters at, a, at the uh, Lay Park polling place. So we're going to check in with her very soon. Then right back here in our election studio, our live studio panel is going to talk to us soon a little bit about why this election is so important and why it matters to people in our local area. And right next to me over here is our reporter Savannah Wilson in our digital election center. She's going to tell us how this election is playing out online. Hi, Savannah. Hi, Dylan. Thanks for joining us this afternoon. The polls are open, people are voting, and a special edition of Grady News Source starts right now. With your enthusiasm, on March 1st, Georgia voters get their say. We are going to win right here. For the first time today. Are we going to win Georgia? Yes. And both sides will decide who they want. We're going to. I see it. I feel it. To lead their party. I drove up today from the University of Georgia. In a battle for every branch of government. We have a critical choice to make. Our country literally hangs in the balance. Who will Georgia pick today? The fight goes on. The polls are open. The future that we want is within our grasp. People are voting, and it's all up to you. It's Super Tuesday, 2016. This is Northeast Georgia's only local source for election coverage. Live from the Grady College at the University of Georgia, this is a special edition of Grady News Source. And thanks again for joining us today. I'm Dylan Richards, reporting live from the Peyton Anderson Student Forum at the Grady College of Journalism. And hello to our live studio audience this afternoon. How are you guys doing? Good. <laughs> well, we'll start off this afternoon with some numbers we just got today from the Georgia Secretary of State's office. They told us they were shattering records for early voting numbers. In 2008, they got 271,418 votes. This year, in terms of early voting, they got 417,000 votes. So very exciting day. Uh, we'll see if those records continue to be broken in the in-person voting. A look at some of the polling this afternoon. These are from WSB TV and Landmark. Obviously on the Republican side, Donald Trump very much on top with a commanding lead at 32% of the vote. Marco Rubio and Ted Cruz trying to follow behind him with 23 and 19%. And Governor John Kasich and Dr. Ben Carson down in the fourth and fifth place with 8% of the vote each. Those undecideds though are gonna be very, very crucial in this race. Depending on the, how those split, we might be seeing a difference in the second or third place in this race, but still a close-ish race on this side here in Georgia. Looking over at the Democratic side, it's a very, very different story. These are again from WSB TV. 72% of uh, people told WSB that they were going to vote for Secretary, uh, former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton and 20% for Bernie Sanders, so obviously Hillary Clinton with a commanding lead right now over Bernie Sanders. Take a look at some of the delegate numbers right now. These are very, very important. A Republican would need 1,237 votes to win that nomination. Right now, I don't even know if you can see these graphics, Donald Trump is very much in the lead with 82 votes, 82 delegates. But, and that's a huge number of votes, 595 delegates available today on Super Tuesday. If those split the way we expect them to, or, or the way that the polls expect them to, Donald Trump will end up with 410 delegates. We'll have to see how everything actually does turn out but uh, he would be well on his way to the nomination, uh, more than a quarter of the way, it looks like. Moving on to the Democratic side of the race, a Democrat would need 2,382 delegates to win that nomination. Right now, Hillary Clinton has 543, but again, 865 delegates available today on Super Tuesday. If Hillary Clinton wins 70% of those, she will be halfway to that 2,382 that she needs to become the Democratic Party's nominee for president. So obviously a very, very interesting day ahead of us today. We're going to go live now, though, to uh, downtown Athens, where our reporter Lana Harris is there talking to voters in the Lay Park polling precinct. Lana, I see you have your, uh, or you told me earlier that you've got your Georgia uh, voter sticker on this afternoon. Yes, I do, Dylan. And we all know that the sticker makes it official that you are a Georgia voter. And I'm not the only one here getting it today. You can see there's a few people in there right now, but they said that there's been a steady stream of people all morning long, starting at 7 a.m. when the polls first opened. And it's a good thing, too, because Georgia Secretary of State Brian Kemp said that this is going to be a big year for Georgia and showing the rest of the country how relevant Georgia can be in big elections. 
Today, you have the chance to vote on who gets to run for a position only held by 44 men in the history of this country. Hey, we're voting for the leader of the, the free world. But Georgia's vote hasn't always seemed to matter. Either the race was already over with before it got here, or we were going the same day as big states like New York or California, and we were kind of overshadowed. With today's vote being so early on in the primary, Kemp says that this is Georgia's year to be taken seriously. It's not going to be just them thinking about, you know, Iowa, New Hampshire, and swing states. They're going to remember uh, Georgia in the South because of this race. And as the candidates make stops in the Peach State, Kemp hopes some of the issues Georgia voters care most about stay with them. It's not just about the corn and the ethanol out in Iowa. We've got a lot of chickens that's eating that corn right here in Georgia. And unlike Iowa, Georgia still has delegates at stake. 76 delegates for the Republicans and 102 delegates for the Democrats, plus 14 superdelegates. I hope people will be motivated and get out and vote today for the candidate of their choice and let's show the, the rest of the country that Georgia takes their election. Kim says that the next president is going to have a lot on his plate and with big ticket items like health care, immigration and higher education, there is a lot at stake here. Now I'm here with one voter right now. This is Kirsten. Yes, Kirsten McGee. How are you? Hey, I'm doing great. OK, so why do you think it's so important that people get out and vote? I think it's really important because if you don't vote, then your voice is not heard. And it, it truly is important. And I have two young boys, and I've taken them with me every single time to go and help me vote so that they learn how to vote and they understand the importance of it. And we have an especially contentious year this year, and um, I think you need to have all cards in. Well, thank you so much, Kirsten. I really appreciate it. That's all I've got for you. Thank you. Thanks. So we'll see you guys again later. Uh, the polls are, polls are open until 7 p.m., so you've got plenty of time to get out here. Thanks so much, and thanks so much for that report. So what does all this mean, all these numbers, all these uh, people voting downtown right now? We're in the middle of what they call the SEC primary. Georgia, Texas, Alabama, all states voting this afternoon. Uh, and, and those states have become critical to a presidential campaign's success throughout the rest of the year. Georgia, again, is one of 14 states voting this afternoon. A lot of big delegate counts up for grabs today. So Georgia, Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Alabama, Tennessee, all southern states voting this afternoon. And again, a candidate's performance right here in the south is crucial to the rest of this year. Um, but the number one thing we're looking at, or another big thing that we're looking at, is the fact that Georgia's an open primary. So if you go to vote this afternoon, if you already went to vote, if you're about to go vote, you'll see there's no, you don't have to prove you're part of a certain party. You go in, they hand you a ballot, you check off Republican or Democrat, and you can vote in that party's primary. So very exciting day as we've seen so far. And we've seen those numbers, we've seen people voting live downtown, but we want to see how people are reacting to this election live online. So our reporter Savannah Wilson is standing by right now to tell us a little bit about that. Savannah, what are things looking uh, like online right now? Well, Dylan, you know they're very active today. Social media as a whole is very active and Candidates were even tweeting out before 7 a, before 7 a.m. before many of you were even awake. You can see here that Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders have been tweeting out to their supporters, each including tools that show you where you can find your exact polling place. Now, moving on to Trump, Rubio, and Cruz, they have all tweeted out as well. Trump even showing a picture from right here in Georgia. And um, next we have Kasich and Carson, both asking for their support via Twitter as well. And we still have a poll open on our Twitter at Grady News Source. So put your vote in for that on that poll. And that is going to see what our panel uh, later on in the show will be talking about. So we've got that poll online right now, Savannah. But what's the best way for people to get uh, in contact with us during the rest of today's coverage? Yeah, Dylan, we want you to use the hashtag Peach State Primary. That is how you can interact with Grady News Source right here. I have it in my hand. I'll be seeing your tweets at us. We have our live audience actually tweeting us as well. So it's been an active day for us here on social media. All right, Savannah, thank you so much. And we'll be sure to check back in with you very soon. So Marco Rubio, Ted Cruz, Bernie Sanders, Donald Trump, all of those candidates have opened offices here in Georgia, most of them out in Atlanta. But one of those candidates, Bernie Sanders, opened an office right here in Athens. He says it's very critical, and our reporter, Abby Jessen, is going to tell us about why it's so critical to have an office here and how he's going to use his Athens office to improve his national campaign. Athens because of the students. He pulls well among millennials, and Athens is a college town filled with potential voters and volunteers for Sanders. In campaigns is to have volunteers, especially for Bernie's campaign, because he does not have any super PACs or big donors. 
having volunteers in a grassroots movement is huge. So he chose Athens because of the students, because we're millennials and because not only do we support him, but we can help his campaign and work on his campaign. Sanders office is located here on Prince Avenue. Volunteers can gather to canvas, phone bank, take flyers and buttons to share with their friends. For volunteers, it's all about information. Democracy is so important and voting is so important and just sort of helping people know that and getting just youth turnout. Though Deckel is the only full-time worker on the campaign, volunteers say that having a central point that makes the buttons and flyers and provides pizza and a phone banking dialer is a big help. Sanders volunteers want to make sure that college students know when and where they can vote. In downtown Athens, Abby Jessen. And the Sanders campaign says that regardless of how today goes, they're going to continue to use this uh, Athens office to do phone banking for the rest of the country. And we just want to let you know that our reporter, Abby Jessen, put together uh, some information about how phone banking works and how candidates use it. That can be found on our website, GradyNewsSource.com. We also want to tell you about a student that got kind of famous this past week uh, after a video of him hugging presidential candidate John Kasich went viral. We talked to him about what that moment meant to him, and we found out what that moment meant to Governor John Kasich. Republican his whole life, but he's never liked a candidate as much as he likes Ohio Governor John Kasich. This is different. This is more, this is the real deal, and it's not like if my candidate loses, we're all right, we have something better. It's not the case this time, at least not for me. So when he got to meet Kasich last week in South Carolina, it was a dream come true. But being able to meet him and share that kind of moment, you know, that just was extra that made it even better. That moment was a story he told the governor that surprised everyone in the room. Over a year ago, uh, a man who was like my second dad, uh, he killed himself. But, and I was in a really dark place for a long time. I was pretty depressed, but I found hope and now I've found it in my presidential candidate that I support. Once it was, it was kind of therapeutic, you know, to get some of that stuff off your chest because for some reason you don't really tell your friends some of these things or for some reason you'll tell a stranger like Governor Kasich, you know. But, you know, when I was getting the hug, it wasn't that I was getting a hug from Ohio Governor John Kasich. I was getting a hug from a man named John Kasich who just so happens to be the governor and running for president. Smith says he didn't mean to bring all that up but he wanted to tell the governor a story only he could tell. You know, I've learned so much from, listen, everybody here. You gotta celebrate other people's wins and sometimes you gotta sit with them and cry. For Smith, this election is about the soul of the Republican Party. And I think that John Kasich not only can beat Clinton, but he would also be a strong leader, you know, and I think he would unite people rather than divide people. And that picture obviously says it all. What a great moment between a voter and a candidate. Uh, Smith told us that that moment was very important to him and that this is a vote, a vote for John Kasich, that he can be proud of. Coming up next in our show, we're going to talk to our live panel. They've been waiting very patiently right over here for us. They're going to tell us again about why this election is so different and important. And then a little bit later, we'll have your, uh, your forecast for the northeast, excuse me, the northeast Georgia political climate. That forecast up a little bit later as well. We'll be right back. for a littervention, dance. No one is here to judge you, but you are a filthy, disgusting person. Why? We did not raise you to litter. You know it's illegal. Just look what you're doing to your father. Your littering embarrasses me in front of my roller derby team. Why? Your dirty secret is out. Get clean for Athens. <laughs> The mission of the Student Veterans Resource Center is to serve as the go-to location for wayfinding and entry into an array of services provided by the University of Georgia. And you can talk about some of the things that you may not normally be able to talk about uh, with other students. That has really kind of made the difference on uh, my experience here at the university. You are enabled and equipped to do things that we honor you today. Let's face it, when mosquitoes show up uninvited, they can be really annoying. A mosquito does not respect your personal space. Hey! And if you don't do something to stop them, mosquitoes can ruin your summer fun. <laughs> so, here's some helpful mosquito control tips. 
Most importantly, get rid of standing water where mosquito larvae live and grow. Anything that holds water for more than a week may lead to more mosquitoes. When in doubt, dump it out. Buy mosquito briquettes to kill larvae in water that you can't dump out. Cut back and clear excess vegetation where adult mosquitoes like to stay. Mm -hmm. Cover up or use repellent when you can, especially during dusk or dawn hours when mosquitoes are most active. Report dump sites to the athens Clark County government. Mosquitoes don't respect property lines, so we all need to do our part to help control them. A mosquito problem in one place can be an issue for the entire community. Find more helpful tips about mosquito control at AthensPartCounty.com. Thank you for being with us. And Stephen Greenway is the state chairman of the Georgia Association of College Republicans. Thank you all for being here. Thank well, you I'll start with you. Of course, that's kind of all at the same time. Um, Dr. Putnam, I'll start with you. What's the number one thing you're looking for, or what can people, number one thing people can focus on when seeing the returns come in tonight? Well, there's going to be a lot coming in. It's not just uh, one state as we've seen with um, Iowa, New Hampshire, Nevada, and South Carolina so far. Um, the, the big thing is, um, given the polling information we have, you want to look at, at um, how wide a margin um, either Hillary Clinton on the Democratic side or, or Donald Trump on the Republican side are, are winning these contests by, because that's going to translate to a lot more delegates for, for both of them. Um, the polling information, though it's scant in, in most of these states, um, paints a pretty clear picture about the winners. So, so really we're kind of looking, particularly on the Republican side, at, at who's second, who's third, um, and, and uh, whether or not some of those folks are even going to qualify for delegates in the first place. And so, Russell, uh, it looks like Clinton has this primary locked up here in Georgia. Is there any hope for Bernie Sanders here? I think that uh, the polls are going to are going to prove that Hillary has an insurmountable lead here in Georgia. But, uh, you know, for Sanders to sort of carry on his campaign after today, I think we're going to have to be looking at the states of Vermont. He's got to win Vermont just overwhelmingly. It, uh, he probably has to do very well in Colorado, if not win it, win Minnesota, win Oklahoma, win Massachusetts. Those are the states that he's purchased TV ads in, so you would expect him to do well there. Um, if he doesn't win all those states, it will severely compromise his ability to move forward with the campaign. Uh, the do or die date for Bernie Sanders, though, would definitely be March 15th when we have Michigan, Florida, Illinois, Missouri, Ohio, North Carolina. Uh, Georgia, I think, is a foregone conclusion. I mean, uh, it's tough to parachute into a party a year before a presidential election and get the support needed to take down uh, someone with as, as much respect and broad support as Hillary Clinton. So we, we've seen that play out here in Georgia, South Carolina. She's easily going to coast to victory in Virginia, Tennessee, Arkansas, Texas, Alabama. Well, it'll be a big night for Hillary. Right, and, and same kind of thing on, on the Republican side. Does, does Donald Trump have this race locked up all over the country today, or, or what are we looking for in terms of weaknesses there? Well, I think that the, the, the thing that we're looking at is whether or not he's going to win all 11 states or whether maybe one or two peel off. I think those two, he, he, it seems like Rubio or Cruz could come in second maybe in Virginia or challenge his lead in Virginia, so there's one state. And then the other state is Texas, which of course is Cruz's home state, and he's got to win that state in order to be viable long term. So it, it looks like it could be eight states for Trump. It looks like it could be all 11. Either way, it's going to be a really big night for him. A very big night, probably for everybody, but definitely uh, for those candidates as well. I think we're going to go to a Twitter question now. So Savannah, uh, what's that question we've got for our panel? Absolutely. We have our first Twitter question. And it's from at Destiny Des. She says, how is Donald, Donald Trump really a serious candidate? He has no political background at all. I think it's a question some of most of people are asking. I think, Stephen, I don't think they're trying to criticize you, but I think right. that's a question for you. Right. <laughs> well, how, did, how, did, how did he get so popular here? Well, I think that Donald Trump speaks to the people who have lost out on globalization. They've lost out on the world that, that we live in now, where jobs are being offshored and where immigrants are coming in. And, and Barack Obama, through his seven years in the presidency, has scored a lot of victories, whether it be on health care or on gay marriage or, or these different causes that Republicans care about. And they feel like the GOP establishment has done nothing to stop him. They, they've, done, he, they've done nothing to sort of hold back uh, this liberal tidal wave from coming over uh, the ship of America. And uh, Trump speaks to those that are really frustrated, not just with liberalism, but with the GOP establishment. And we're going to go to a question from the audience. Grace is standing by with somebody from the audience. 
I think we're walking over there now. All right, so I was going to ask, uh, <clears throat> since the South is like a really big place for Republicans to get a lot of their votes from, do you think any of the major candidates like Cruz or Rubio will drop out today if they lose a lot of the Southern states? Uh, Dr. Putnam, what do you think? Um, I mean, that's, that's kind of the big question. We, we look at, at this being a sequential process rather than everyone voting on the same day. Um, it tends to, over the course of that sequence, winnow the field. Um, yeah, I mean, if, if, if Cruz is unable to win in Texas tonight, um, that's, that's um, not a, a good sign for his campaign, right? Um, you, you, candidates don't lose their home state, right? Um, if if they, they do, well, I mean, historically we look at this, candidates that stay in will, will win their home state, um, but, but some will drop out before it gets to their home state. Um, but across the rest of the region, obviously, uh, Cruz has, has placed a lot of emphasis on uh, the SEC primary, but has been overtaken by Trump among particularly cultural evangelicals, so folks that aren't regular church attenders, but um, uh, identify with, with the ideology more or less. Um, and he's, he's really done really well with that, that group. Um, so I, again, don't know that, that we'll necessarily see um, any, any folks drop out tonight. There's motivation for them to stay in. And, it, and it's pretty odd that I, Trump is winning over these, these cultural ideologues, as you say, because his language is, is probably the softest on Planned Parenthood in the entire Republican field. Uh, you heard in the debate, uh, the last debate, uh, Ted Cruz, Marco Rubio, very anti-Planned Parenthood. Sure. Trump, on the other hand, coming out and saying, look, Planned Parenthood helps millions of women right. across the country. I believe we should defund it, but I don't want to get rid of it. Right. So the, the way he's been able to thread that needle, I, I think, He's just an entertaining guy, you know? He's a reality TV star, he knows how to play the media, hadn't raised any money, hadn't spent any money. He's just said a bunch of outrageous things that's kept him in the news. It's, it's an amazing thing to witness. Well, I appreciate all your comments here. Unfortunately, we do have to take a quick break and then we will be right back with some more about uh, Northeast Georgia's political climate and how that race is going right now. Stay with us. Driving down Oconee Street in Athens, you might get a glimpse of this in your rear view mirror. This red building is famously known as the REM steeple and sits right behind Nucci space. It used to be a part of St. Mary's Episcopal Church, but in 1990, the church was torn down, leaving the steeple to stand alone. My personal connection to it is that it's music related and, and, uh, and, uh, and that's what I've chosen to do with my life. Athenian Dr. Wayland Walker says even though the steeple is falling down, it still stands for the music culture of Athens. It's just part of Athens' heritage. It's, you know, where REM first played, part of the music history of the place. So that was why it was important to so many people. Today, the nearly 150-year-old steeple is slowly crumbling, but fundraising efforts by local Athens musicians hope to keep it standing. Uh, live now to our reporter Lana Harris, who's in downtown Athens, who's going to give us an update on how many people are there right now and how many people are voting right now live. Hey, we're back and we have with us uh, Hawk Jones. Hawk Jones. Now, did you just vote? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so why did you feel like it was so important to be out here and vote today? Um, I mean, you're kind of picking the man who's the most powerful man in the world, so you're choosing the fate. Okay, well, thank you so much and thank you for your thoughts. We'll be back later. And obviously today, <laughs> we got a real quick mirror back there. Obviously today is an extremely important day in the 2016 presidential primary. But for the rest of the uh, state, there's a lot of critical offices up right now as well. Here in Athens, we're split uh, between two congressional districts. We'll get some Athens polls right now. But we're split between two congressional districts, the 9th and the 10th district. Um, so we can see those right there, the 10th district extending very, very far south, moving up here uh, into the 9th district up in, Athen, uh, in the Athens area. Currently, uh, talking about the 9th district first, currently Representative Doug Collins is right here in the 9th district. He's been in office since 2013. He's got two challengers, Robert Fitzpatrick and Mike Scuppin, both Republicans. So they're obviously both vying for that 9th district seat. And District 10, which covers a lot of Athens-Clark County, is Republican Congressman Jody Heiss. He is trying to hold on to his year-long term in office so far against the Democratic challenger, Len Ware, a uh, pastor from Grayson. 
Looking at the Senate race, though, Georgians are not only going to be selecting a president right here to um, this year, they'll also be electing a U.S. senator. Will that be the incumbent Johnny Isaacson, or will we have somebody new in office? Our reporter Rayleigh Roser looked into that for us. The Senate race in Georgia officially begins next week. Candidates will declare their intentions to run between March 7th and 11th and claim a place on the primary ballot. So who's running? Well, Senator Isaacson has announced he will seek re-election despite his diagnosis of Parkinson's disease. Isaacson has been in office since 2005 and serves as chairman on the Senate Veterans Affairs Committee as well as the Ethics Committee. So far, he has two challengers for the Republican nomination. Derek Grayson, an Atlanta minister and MARTA engineer, describes himself as a, quote, constitutional conservative. Lee Benedict, a military veteran, has also announced his intention to run. His blog posts on his campaign website frequently critique Isaacson's actions, claiming the senator is not conservative enough. Now, no Democrats have stepped forward to run yet, but a representative from the Democratic Party of Georgia told me they do intend to select a candidate and they will run a full campaign. Currently, the only alternative to a Republican candidate is a Libertarian one. Ted Metz is a former Cobb County Republican district chairman and a member of several civic organizations. He wants to scale back the size of the government and, as he puts it, return to the principles of the Founding Fathers. Alan Buckley, an Atlanta attorney, ran for Senate in 2008 and 2004. His platform also emphasizes scaling down the size of the government and significantly reforming the tax system. The election will be November 8th, the same day as the presidential election and other local races. Rayleigh Rozier, Grady News Source. A lot going on in this presidential season. We're going to go back live to downtown Athens just one more time. Check in with Lana one last time. We've got her stationed out there talking to voters. Lana, what's going on? And there's been a lot of people come in just in the little time that we were away. There are about seven, eight people in line right now, and it's been coming in very, very, very quickly. So you'll want to get out here, and there's not too bad of a line yet so that you'd be standing outside, but enough of a line that you can feel like you all are making a difference together. Now, to come and vote, you will need any valid ID. So that's a driver's license, military ID, anything that has a valid picture of you. So much, Lana. That's it for Grady News Source's afternoon coverage of Super Tuesday, but we will be on the air for most of the rest of today. Let's look at our later newscast. Today we've got a newscast, our regular newscast, at 5 p.m. this afternoon. We won't be able to stay away from election coverage, but that will be our focus. But we'll also have sports and weather in there for you as well and some local news. That's it for our coverage this afternoon, though. I'm Dylan Richards, live at Grady College. Thank you so much for joining us. Source is a student production of the Grady College of Journalism and Mass Communication at the University of Georgia, which is solely responsible for its contents. Views expressed do not represent those of the administration nor the Board of Regents at the University. This is a one-stop shop for all things an up-and-coming musician needs. It's nestled on the corner of William Street and Oconee Street, right next to the REM steeple. What started as a warehouse in 2000 has quickly become a second home for musicians and those suffering from mental illness. Today, musicians of all ages come to Nucci Space to refine their craft. But not only do they offer practice rooms and rentable equipment, they also provide access to affordable mental health care. Nucci's counseling advocate Leslie Cobbs believes that their work to destigmatize conditions like depression and anxiety creates a happier and healthier community at large. Your community is better if your mental health is better. And that goes, everybody within that community is affected by everybody else's mental health. With the help of their dedicated volunteers and employees, Nucci's will continue to positively impact Athens for years to come. One day, when the glory comes, it will be ours. Dr. King, what's your next move? In March, from summer to Montgomery. My new mom and I have a lot in common. <sighs> the great outside. We both love the outdoors. So shiny. That's not a flower. We both love geology. Oh, look. An igneous one. That's not a rock. And she knows a lot about wildlife. <gasps> a labradoodle. <laughs> That's not a dog. Hanging out has been kind of fun. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of kids in foster care will take you.